Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the powers of the cross and dot product and real use cases for both of these methods. But before I go on with the video, if you guys do enjoy or learn from this video, please leave a like and subscribe. But let's start with the video. But before we get into the cross and dot product, there's first something you guys have to understand, and that is look vectors. And if you don't know what a look vector is, it is just the direction a C-frame is facing. And why this is important is because what the dot product does is it gives us a value based on how much two vectors are going in the same direction. So for example, we have two parts that are looking in the same direction, then the dot product will equal one because they are looking in the same direction. So what this would look like is we would get our two parts and then use a vector dot dot and send in our two look vectors and then we get the product value from that which would be one. So now let's make them face at a right angle to each other. What would the dot product for this be? Well, if we ran the same code, the value we would get would be zero. So if they are looking in the same direction, the product is one. If they are at a right angle to each other, the product would be zero. So now what would it be if they are facing in the opposite direction? Well, then the dot product would be negative one. But now you're not always going to have perfect numbers like one, zero, and negative one. So a lot of the time you are going to have a long decimal that you would check in an if statement for your certain scenario. So some real use cases for dot include attacking an NPC only if your character is facing it, in horror games where monsters only appear when the player isn't facing them, or if you're playing a tree chopping simulator or a game like that, checking if the player is facing the object to register an action. So now let's talk about the cross product. So we know that the look vector is the direction a C-frame is facing, the right vector is the direction to the right side the C-frame is facing, and the up vector is the direction pointing to the top of the C-frame. So let's say we have an up vector and a look vector but we are missing the right vector so how can we find the right vector that is where cross comes in cross basically allows us to find the direction perpendicular to two other directions so you would send in your two vectors into vector.cross and it returns the missing vector for whatever you need it for just like that so where would you use cross? Well, you would use a cross to find which axis to rotate a cannon to face a target and to find which axis to rotate a hoverboard so it stays level while still pointing forward. So now that we have the basic rundown of these two methods, let's hop into Roblox Studio and start making some little systems. Okay, so here we are in Roblox Studio, and so the first thing we are going to do is check whether the player is facing another rig or NPC. So we are going to go to the avatar rig builder and just spawn in a block avatar, so he will be there. And then we are going to insert a local script into starter player scripts and start off by getting our player and our character. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to get is the rig that's in our workspace. So game.workspace, wait for child rig. And then we are going to get a distance variable called to rig. And I will explain everything in this script when I am done. So to rig will be equal to rig dot humanoid root part dot position minus our characters humanoid root part position and then we're going to say dot unit and then we are going to get the look vector of our character's humanoid root part so we're just going to call this player look will be equal to character dot humanoid root part dot c frame dot look vector and then we are going to get the dot product so local dot is equal to vector dot dot and then we can send in our two vectors so player look and then two rig 
and then to check if we are facing the rig we can say if dot is greater than zero so remember we are checking if this is greater than zero which basically means we are more positioned or basically like we are looking more at the character than we are not but i know i worded that weird but basically if we are just looking in the general direction of the rig so we're going to say then and print player is facing the rig and so before we run this i'm also going to add a task dot wait just so everything is loaded in and we can't see the result and so now if we were to open up our output and go into the game and look at the rig you will see that in the output it says player is facing the rig and so we're going to stop the game head back in and look slightly away it will still count okay so as you guys could see there it didn't work that time and i'm not for sure why it might have been because of my idle animation it kind of screws with my look vector but it could have been that it couldn't have been so i added this extra rig humanoid root part variable just to make sure that it is fully loaded in and also if we are not facing the rig they were going to print the result i think that happened because my animation was screwed up but we can try it again making sure my animation doesn't screw it up and check the output it says players facing the rig so i think that is because of the animation or because something with the humanoid root part i doubt it's because the humanoid root part wasn't loaded in but there we go you can check whether or not you are roughly looking at the rig just like that so now let's get into how this script works so we are getting the player and the player's character and getting the rig in the workspace and then this to rig variable we are subtracting the rigs humanoid root part position from our characters humanoid root part position and so this gives us a vector 3 pointing from the player to the rig and also adding dot unit converts this into a unit vector which basically means that the length is one and so this two rig variable gives us a vector three that describes the direction from the player to the rig and so then we know the direction the rig is located relative to the player and then we are getting the player look vector and then throwing those two vectors into dot and dot gives us the value that we then check so if dot is greater than zero then that means the rig is in front of the player or within that field of view so if we were to check if this was less than or equal to zero then we are checking if it would be behind the player so pretty simple system that could be used for quite a few things so now let's get into examples of the cross product and I thought the easiest way to explain this was by actually using code from a system. So this hoverboard script is Supi Kaner's hoverboard script in a video from a few years ago from 2023 and so I have it all here and he uses cross for the orientation I'm going to explain why we need this and what it does so this line right here uses the cross product to figure out which way the side of the hoverboard should face so we already know the look vector of the seat or the hoverboard and we also know what's up uh, or the y-axis so here we have vector 3 dot y-axis but to build this full rotation we need a third direction which is either our left or right vector so cross here is giving us the side direction that we need for the hoverboard to tilt because as i said earlier cross gives us the vector that's perpendicular to the two other vectors so here it basically is helping the hoverboard know which way is sideways so it keeps it level and stable when the hoverboard moves or tilts but to sum it all up in one sentence we are using cross here in this hoverboard system 
because we need the hoverboard to know its side direction so it keeps its rotation balanced. So the last thing I want to go over for this video is how you guys can make this part look like a billboard, but using parts. Now that's the best way I can describe it, but you guys will see what it will look like in a second. But here I have a part and I already have a local script. So first thing, we are going to get the camera, so game.workspace.currentcamera, and we are also going to get the part, so game workspace part, and then run service, and then we're gonna say run service dot pre render connect function, and then we are going to get a forward variable which is camera dot c frame dot position minus our parts position, and then as I did earlier, we're gonna say dot unit, and then we're going to get a up y axis vector which will be vector 3 dot y axis and then right is equal to vector dot cross forward up and then we're going to set the up variable to vector dot cross and say right and then forward and then finally set the part c frame so part dot c frame will be equal to c frame dot from matrix part dot position and then right up and then negative forward so what we are doing here is getting our camera our part in our workspace run service and then every frame we are getting a new forward variable which is basically a unit vector that points from the part to the camera and then we are getting a global up direction which is vector 3 dot y axis which is just 0 1 0 uh, we use this as a reference so the part doesn't twist sideways and so then in this right variable, we are getting a vector that is perpendicular to both the forward and up vector. So this finds the parts right side and then we recalculate the up vector. So it's perfectly perpendicular to both the right and forward vector. So this just makes sure that the axis form a clean rotation and there isn't any weird tilts. So then now we have the forward vector, which points towards the camera, the right vector, which is the sideways part, and then up, which is just pointing straight up. And so using all that information, we can build the parts orientation and send in everything here. And so by the way, we are making this negative, so negative forward, because we want the parts front face to point in the negative Z direction the negative z direction is by default in roblox so then if we go ahead and play test our game you will see that our part looks like a billboard and as we move our camera around everything looks very very nice and it almost i mean it really doesn't even look like we are using a part for this but we are using a billboard. So it's just a nice cool effect that you guys might want to use in your game or you guys might find some cool use cases for. But yeah, guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.